This is Tristan with Victress Games. Hello and welcome back! This is our 10th video on how to make a game using GDevelop, the 2D open source game engine. In this video, we will add some juice to our game, including a Shadow Clones effect, Screen Shake, and Particle effects. But before I do that, I want to share with you some of the projects I've been working on in the past few weeks. Specifically, two different game jams. The first game jam was the GDevelop game jam, which is a 10-day game jam with the theme of build or rebuild. I created a game called Colony Crawler. In this game, you drag and drop parts to create your own custom crawler, which includes powered wheels and pivot joints that can change the shape of your crawler. And the goal of the game is to build a crawler at the lowest possible cost that can cross the terrain of the level. I spent a lot of time on this game, but overall I'm very pleased with how it turned out because I learned a lot of new things, especially a lot of new things about physics joints which I think will become very useful in helping me with my other games, including Slime Dunk. I'm also very pleased with the results. There were 211 games submitted to this jam, and mine scored 13th. Turns out people really liked my game idea and mechanics, but not so much for my art and audio effects, and I have to agree they are probably right about both those things. The second game jam I participated in was Ludum Dare 50. I chose to enter into the compo division, which meant that I had 48 hours to create a game from scratch using only my own art and sound and a team of one. The game I created is called The Squeal of Time, and in this game you play as a pig who can slow down time just enough that you can cross a chasm of falling lava. I felt this game mechanic was a good fit for the theme of the game jam, which was delay the inevitable. My favorite part of this jam was recording sound effects with my kids. They did some of the sound effects and voice acting, and we even poured water into a hot pan for the sizzling effect when the pig is standing on lava. I don't know how well this game is going to do in the jam, because the, the voting period is still in progress. So if you were a part of this jam, please consider trying my game and giving it a rating. Now that you're all caught up, let's get back to this game tutorial. The first way we're going to add some juice to this game is to make our player a little more dynamic. Currently it's just a square that rotates and has a pretty cool shadow effect, which is great, and you can certainly leave it as is. But I want to show you something that's pretty simple to do and has a pretty neat effect. It's based off an extension that I created called Shadow Clones. So we'll need to install the extension, if you search for clone called Animate Shadow Clones. Entropy helped me with this one. You should read the text to understand what it can do, and we'll install it. This extension requires a new object to be specified, which is the Shadow Clone. The easiest way to do that is to duplicate the primary object, which in this case for us will be the player. Let's duplicate the player, and we'll call it Shadow Clone. So this Shadow Clone sprite, it does not need the physics extension because it just follows the position of the player. So I deleted the physics behavior. Next, let's go to our event sheet. We'll create a new event group. We're not going to add any conditions because we want this to run every frame. We'll add an action. If we search for clone, we can choose animate Shadow Clones that follow the path of the primary object. This is the object that the Shadow Clones will follow. We want them to follow the player. Shadow Clones will be made of this object. It cannot be the same object as the primary object. That's our new Shadow Clone object. Let's create eight Shadow Clones, and we'll put three frames between each one. We do not want to fade their opacity, but we do want to shrink their size. So each clone will be slightly smaller than the other one. We'll create them on the base layer. For the Z value, we can actually reference the player Z value. We don't want these Shadow Clones to be in front of the player, so I'm just going to do a negative 1, which will mean the Shadow Clones will always be right behind the player. And we're going to match all of the attributes of the primary object. And our Shadow Clone is ready to go. Before we start moving, you can't see anything because the Shadow Clones are all underneath the primary object. I don't like the way the sh drop shadow looks, so let's go to the effects. And I'm actually just going to delete the drop shadow effects and re-add it with the default values, and we'll choose solid black. 
Same for the shadow clone. We will add the defaults for drop shadow black. Uh, let's see what this looks like. Okay, that's pretty neat. For the next bit of juice to be added to this game, let's make the impacts with the obstacles feel a little more strong or powerful. We can do this by adding some screen shake. This is also done through an extension that I made. Camera shake. Whenever I'm making a new visual or sound effect, I like to make a quick test key that will let me see how the effect looks and feels without having to make it actually happen in using the game itself. So let's just set it for the space bar to cause the shake to happen. That way we can re refine the look and feel without having to actually run into the obstacles. I'll put it under the player hits an obstacle group Camera Shake has a lot of parameters that you can use to get a many different types of shakes, from fast, slow. You can shake just the position on the X axis or Y axis or both. Shaking through by rotating the camera or zooming the camera. These all have different looks and feels to them, so you can play with these to find out what you like. In fact, I have created an example on my itch.io page that will let you test these really quickly. If you go to victorusgames.itch.io and search for shake, you will see this example. And this example will let you change the values. So for instance, if we click on camera shake, we can shake the camera. And I won't talk about this in this video, but you should definitely play with this. I'll use the values I liked. Let's shake 40 pixels left and right on the base layer. We'll keep it at half a second. We'll rotate it one degree and zoom. We won't do anything with zoom. And 0.15 seconds between each shake. So now this will happen when we press the space key. Let's test it. Space, space, space. Because I'm only shaking the base layer, the UI stays stable, which I think is a nice effect. So this feels like a good shake to me. The last part of juice that we're gonna to add to this game is a particle effect. To create a particle effect, we need to use a new type of object called a particle emitter. Now particle effects are very flexible in what they can do. If you wanna learn more about them, please watch the video I created about particle effects, which will help you get started. For this game, I want to make the particles look like they're pieces broken off of the obstacle. So to do that, let's change the particle type from a circle to a line. This basically can create rectangles. We'll make them 16 pixels by 16 pixels, so actually it'll be squares. We'll use the same exact color as the obstacles. The start and the end color will be the same. And we'll keep their opacity full the entire time. We'll create five particles each time we crash into a obstacle. We'll give them a pretty substantial force. And we'll spray them in a 180 degree cone, so basically a half circle. And the particles will live between one and two seconds. They will stay the same size. And they will have some rotation on them. Some slow, some fast. I have this option delete when out of particles. And there's only five particles. So after those five particles are emitted, this actual particle emitter will delete itself. So we only have to worry about creating it. So we need to create this. I'm going to move these to sub events. So when the space key is pressed, let's create the particle. We'll create it at the player's location since there's no obstacles involved. Let's set the Z value of that particles to be right behind the obstacle. And we need to change its direction so that it shoots the particles upwards towards the top of the screen. And 270 is the angle that references up towards the top. Okay, now when we press space key, we'll get the camera shake and we will get these particles created. So let's see what this looks like. So every time I hit 
space, we're getting five of these particles are being created. Okay, now let's have those effects happen when we impact a obstacle. So we already have an event for this, players colliding with the obstacle, with the trigger once. But I actually have two types of obstacles that I want it to happen on. Let's create a group real fast for obstacles. We'll rename it. So we'll make a condition where the player is colliding with that group. The groups are always at the bottom, obstacle group. We still want the trigger once. And I'm actually going to just copy the events we already created and paste them here. So now when the player's colliding with any of the obstacles, it will create the particles and shake the camera. Let's do a test. Okay, it's definitely working, but it's also a little distracting because it feels like there's an earthquake going on. It also feels funny if you hit the obstacle slowly, it still causes the massive impact. So that's not very realistic. We should probably try to define an event condition where the player's moving fast before that visual effect happens. Well, I happen to have a speedometer over here that we can use. Let's use the number of our speedometer to determine whether it's a big impact or not. Let's add a condition that checks the value of that speed number. So we'll add condition, we'll choose two, compare two numbers. And the first one is we need to look at the, the player speed text object. And we're gonna take that string and convert it into a number. And we're gonna check if the number is bigger than, let's say 70 units of speed. This means that the visual effects will only happen when the speedometer shows above 70. Let's see if that works. Let's start with a small impact. Good, there's no visual effects right now. And now let me try getting above 70. There we go. And now we've got our shake and our particles. Now I think that's pretty juicy. What do you think? I did notice one thing that bothers me that we can fix. When we go forward, see how our shadow cones are always on the left? I'd like them to be in the center, and the way we do that is by modifying our origin point normally to the top left, and that's why all of the shadow clones are... Let's change it to the middle. This is a 64 by 64 sprite. Let's change it to that to 32, 32. We'll do the same for the shadow clone. Edit points, origin 32, 32. And now watch, I think it'll look a lot better. Now they're coming from the center. That's all for this video, but keep watching. In our next video, we'll be creating a title screen and an end screen. And our final video in the series will be on how to publish your games. If you're finding these videos valuable, please give a like and subscribe. And if you want to see what else I'm working on, follow me at Victorious Games on Twitter. And lastly, you are welcome to join us on our Discord server. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.